Do you know what the Ukraine is? It's a sitting duck. A road apple, Newman. The Ukraine is weak. It's feeble. I think it's time to put the herd on the Ukraine. I come from Ukraine. You not say Ukraine weak? Yeah, well, we're playing a game here, pal. Ukraine is game to you! How about I take your little bonus? So, this is Louie. And, uh, yeah, it's been a while. We'll see if I can actually turn this into a commentary, because, unfortunately, as it is when it comes to taking time off, it makes it a little bit more difficult to actually hammer out something that's actually worth listening to. But I, I thought I would talk about Ukraine, the conflict in Ukraine, um, not really from the perspective of, like, talking about what's going on and all this sort of shit and getting into, well, we need to get into the meta politics about the, the, the history of Ukraine and NATO and Russia and blah, blah, blah. It, who cares? Who gives a fuck about any of that? And that's kind of really the point of the commentary. Um, I thought I'd mention this tweet from Glenn Jacobs, uh, a.k.a. Kane, from the WWE. He says, if you are on the left and are shocked by Putin's aggression, wake up, sunshine. Historically in the real world, might makes right. Weakness, which is uh, really what the left is all about, is not a virtue. It's a fatal character flaw. And no, the United States should still not get involved. So he got ratioed for this. Uh, there, there's like people posting shit in response to him be, being like, well, okay, you need to donate to this fucking charity and you need to put the Ukrainian flag in your bio. Blah, blah, blah. It, it's like, it, it's just all NPC horse shit. And what I love about people like getting into like, oh, well, we need to, you know, get into, you know, uh, charity shit for refugees. It's like, what's the difference? What what the fuck is it, the difference between a Ukrainian refugee and any other kind of refugee? What is the difference? Oh, well, well they're at a war. Okay, okay, what's the difference? What is the fucking difference? What is it? Oh, well, they're a migrant and these are real refugees. It, it's still parasites that are looking to join our society. Not really join it so much as glom onto it and take my tax dollars to pay for their lifestyles you know they had instability in their nation and rather than stand up and fight they ran rather than defend their own territory they fled to a richer nation in order to steal from it to steal from otherwise productive citizens in a decent society or a relatively decent society a stable society we'll call it that relatively stable um what is the fucking difference? You have some kind of just cause because you're fleeing conflict from your own so-called home nation? That means that you somehow warrant my money? That warrants my generosity towards you? You know, I need to be worried about Ukraine's borders, not America's, not my own home nation, not about what's going on in my immediate area, my community. Pay no mind to that, as no one does. I need to be worried about Ukraine's situation halfway across the fucking world. That's what I need to be concerned about. No, thank you. I, I'm all right. I think things are poor enough in my immediate vicinity compared to whatever the fuck is going on in the Ukraine. So I'm going to start with that, although that's really the gist of this commentary, which is, I don't give a fuck about Ukraine, and neither should you. As it is with most of my commentaries, I'm not really here to convince you. You know, if you are buying into the mainstream media's propaganda as it relates to Ukraine, there's not really much in the way that I can say that's going to change your mind. I'm the black-hearted bastard. You're the good and noble NPC who is going to do some superfluous bullshit to act as though that you're a virtuous person regarding some conflict God knows where about God knows fucking what. This take from Glenn Jacobs is honestly refreshing. Um, because while there are people that are, and even he is doing a little bit of virtue signaling about the Ukraine and all that. If you go on his timeline, he's doing a little bit of virtue signaling about, oh, the Ukrainians, blah, blah, You know, um, the... The point is that, you know, the, the last part of this tweet is, is more or less the entire encapsulation of one's position, 
whether the United States should be involved or not. And if you don't think that the United States should be directly involved in the Ukrainian conflict, then I have to imagine that you agree with me that this is really nothing to do with us, not our issue, does not better or it doesn't help our situation, doesn't make it worse. It, it does not directly impact us at all. It That's the truth. It could affect fucking NATO in some tacit, you know, third dimensional analytical fucking metric. It could involve something in Europe, but that's the EU's problem. That's the, all these Eastern nations, you know, former Eastern Bloc nations. That's their problem. It's Russia's problem. What the fuck does it have to do with, with me? Is the United States involving itself in the Ukraine or the Ukrainian conflict with Russia, is that going to lower my bills as it relates to the gas that heats my home or the gas that fuels my car, which is my number one expense? Is that going to help that situation at all? No. I, I mean, there's no, there's not, it's not even like Iraq, we're going to go there and we're going to start taking natural gas from the Ukraine or oil or something. There's nothing to take there. So how is this even potentially going to affect me in any way? Positively. How? Name it. Ex explain it to me. Sell me on this conflict, our involvement. Sell me. Because so far, I remained thoroughly unconvinced that this is worthy of not only our involvement, but our attention whatsoever. Seriously. I I'm waiting for some kind of explanation. You know, I, I do not care. And any explanation as it relates to why I should care more or less boils down to, well, you need to be concerned about Ukrainians' border and their sovereignty as a nation. Not America's, but theirs. Their sovereignty, their borders, and also Russia bad. Which is like, okay, great. Let's concede the point. Russia bad. Who gives a fuck? What comes of it? If I put the Ukrainian flag... It, it, you know, in the thumbnail of this video, or over my still image, I just replace it with the Ukrainian flag, all right? I put it in the, in the bio of my Getter account. Is that going to make any kind of fucking difference to anything? You know, what's going to occur from this? No, nothing. That's the answer. Nothing is going to come of this. Uh, that's going to help me in any way. So why should I care in the slightest about anything? Other than, well, the mainstream media is talking about it, therefore. That seems to be the only real thing is, oh, I saw this on the news. You're telling me this is in the news and you don't care? You don't care? But, but mainstream media said but Russia bad, Putin bad, Ukrainians good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Shit. Oh, you've changed my mind. Oh shit! Now I'm just hold on. Let me let me get up my fucking getter account right now. I'm changing my fucking bio right now. I'm putting the fucking Ukrainian flag in my image. I'm overlaying it on my avatar. Uh, I I gotta say it's just it's really pathetic as it relates to the argumentation from from the other side on this. Um, because the the only way in which there is going to be a, a semi convincing argument is going to be from some unbelievably analytical perspective it's going to be some unbelievably up in the air analytical abstract concept of well in terms of real politic louis in terms of international affairs let me school you like it's gonna be that it's gonna be okay we're we're off in the land of abstraction this isn't going to better your life in any real way but in terms of the actual abstract concept of of, you know, international affairs in the world, in terms of America itself as this entity on the world stage, this is how it might affect you, might affect you, Louis. Oh, shit! Man, I better sit down. I better shut up. I better, you know, fold my ears and start listening. Listen up. Perking up. I'm listening, baby. Because that's honestly going to be the best explanation offered. It isn't going to change my life in the slightest for the better. But in terms of some fucking academics explanation as to why I should give a fuck in the slightest, that's going to be the best that's on offer, all right? I'm confident in that because I've listened to a bunch of fucking people discuss this issue. 
dumb and smart. And goddamn, am I sitting here waiting with bated breath for any fucking reason why I should care in the slightest. You know, if there is going to be something that is worthy of, of being discussed, it is the fact that, as people on the right are saying, well, would this have happened under Trump? And the answer is no. And yes, that's, that really is the thing, because Trump was trying to em embody the Kissinger-esque or Nixon-esque uh, attitude in terms of international relations of the madman, of you never know what I'm going to do, you never know what I'm going to hit, you never know exactly what my plan is or how I'm going to react, therefore don't fuck with me, don't fuck around in the world stage because I might go off, I might drop a nuke. That is the madman strategy in effect and it works. Honestly, it worked for Nixon, it worked for fucking Trump. Not, you know, in every situation overall, totality, but in several situations, especially with North Korea, I think that's the prime example of Trump, where for years, North Korea was going off the chain, like they're launching nukes and shit over Japan, and then Trump freaking walks into the picture, and I don't know, uh, said on Twitter that his button works, or maybe you call Kim Jong-un a nigger, and I just didn't see it. And all of a sudden, Kim Jong-un's walking up, being like, oh, Kinichwa or whatever the fucking Korean would be to Trump, and come to come to North Korea. What can I say other than that was the W for Trump? He got them to back the fuck off. And I would say that that's a good example of how to do international affairs the right way. Uh, I know that not everyone was a fan of every decision he made in that realm, but I, I would say that considering the alternatives in, in recent memory, he was one of the best. And he definitely um, made it a point to say that he wasn't, he wasn't interested in getting involved overseas. He wasn't interested in invading other nations. He bragged many times about, I never started a war, I never got us involved, I kept us out, you know, I focused on America, America first. He said it over and over and over again. And to anyone that's not a fucking mouth-breathing NPC for the ruling paradigm, you should support this. You know, there used to be a time where the left wing, generally, and nationalists on the right were fully on board with non-intervention in the world, for, especially when it comes to having no reason, no gain to be had for intervention. Um, it seems these days it's only the nationalist right. They don't want to be fucking involved in every goddamn, you know, every just pissant fucking dispute in the fucking world. I mean, l let's get involved with, you know, disputes over the shipping lanes in the Pacific or something that could actually directly impact the United States. Not shit like this. That does nothing. That has no impact on us. At all. The best you got is fucking Europe. And, and this is a Europe that is dependent on Russia. They're dependent on Russia because of their fucking retarded environmentalist policy. So if the EU and all these European nations wanted to get want to get into some pissing match with Russia, by all means, let Europe spend their fucking money and bodies and time on that conflict. What the fuck does the United States have to do with any of this? Outside of the fact that we are footing the bill of fucking NATO, while all these other fucking European nations are spending billions on social welfare programs for their own nations. And by the way, that's not me saying that our money should be going to social welfare programs. It should be going to me as a public sector employee. Pay me more. That's where the money should be going. I guess I'll end it here by saying that my hope is that going into the future, whether it be from more of a libertarian perspective, of which I think Glenn Jacobs is a libertarian, conservative, quote-unquote, or from a nationalist perspective, uh, that being something similar to my own, that we regain the ability to steer the ship in the, in the direction of sanity so that perhaps we can have policy directed in a way that will directly benefit us, the voters, the constituency, the Americans. You know, if 
We're going to be concerned about anybody's borders. It should be America's. That should be the number one priority and everything else on fucking earth should be a distant second. And I don't give a goddamn whether it's Canada's borders, Israel's borders, the UK's borders. They have their own governments. Those governments can be concerned for their own borders. But for America and our so-called government, the number one priority should be our goddamn borders. And as someone who works with a bunch of DHS apparatchiks of other agencies, whether it's ICE or Customs or Border Patrol or who the fuck ever, it doesn't seem like anybody is really concerned about America's borders, especially within the apparatus. No one really cares. It's all very laissez-faire, who gives a fuck, I'm getting paid, I have a career, so who gives a fuck? America's asleep, pay me, faggot. You know, that's the position of most public sector employees, including me. Pay me more money. If America has open borders to everything, crime, trafficking, fucking migrants, and you, you, you gotta bring over the fucking refugees, if we have open borders here, and we got God knows who coming the fuck over here with God knows what with them, all right? Mohammed's coming over here with a fucking dirty bomb, but don't worry about that. You need to be concerned about some fucking unpronounceable name in Eastern Europe. We can't even decide how fucking Kiev is spelled, for Christ's sakes. But no, don't worry about your borders. Don't worry about the border that might be 10 miles from you. Don't worry about it. It's fucking chaos and anarchy, and Christ knows who the fuck's crossing those borders. And, by the way, the people enforcing those borders, or, or their job is to, they don't give a fuck. Don't worry about that, though. Worry about 5,000 miles away. What the fuck's going on over there? You ask me? I think that, as an American, we should be concerned about America's borders. And Americans' fucking sovereignty. I don't really feel like America's a very sovereign nation. It feels like America is the fucking petri dish for a bunch of rootless international elites who, if the United States became cyberpunk tomorrow, you know, if we were living in some post-apocalyptic wasteland, th these people would just pick up and move because they're rootless cosmopolitan internationals. They have no home. They just got money. They would have no issue at all leaving America behind. But those of us that are trapped here, you know, our concern should be here. And I'm hearing too many people that claim to be of similar mind to myself giving a fuck about this foreign conflict. I guess I'll just leave it there. Thank you for listening.